What's up, everybody? Welcome to the show. I am back. Sorry I couldn't make it for the better half of last week. I actually got really sick, and I've been surrounded by a couple of sick people, and so I did what you have to do in this day and age, and I went and got myself a COVID test. Tested positive, but, um, you know, that's okay. I'm still here. No, of course I didn't. Of course I tested negative, but you have to isolate and, you know, do all that stuff when you go and get a COVID test. Uh, and man, I was knocked on my butt. I haven't been sick um, all year, really, and it really took the, took the life out of me. So I apologize. I hope you guys enjoyed having Will, but I hope you didn't enjoy it too much because now you've got me again. Mm-hmm. And uh, we are in peak week. So for those of you that have been consistent with your training, meaning not me, um, you are going to be going for it today. Me, I'm going to be just getting through the workout because we always talk about this and I practice what I preach. I've now had five days off exercise. I just completely rested uh, and did a little bit of mobility um, just to keep my body moving but I was uh, definitely needing it and so to come into peak week and think that I can perform at the same level I was performing last week would be a very stupid thing for me to do so I'm going to do the best that I can do and you're going to do the best you can do so if that means that you can go for it then go for it all right here we go (coughs) tribe good morning tribe Welcome to uh, day <coughs> one of Peak Week, and I'm certainly glad Rad is back. Even though I enjoyed it, I <laughs> am glad I'm sitting down again. How'd you um, go, Will? Yeah, I, uh, I did enjoy it. I, I like filling in. Um, the Wednesday was all right. The Thursday is a real killer on the grip. Yeah, it's brutal, I, isn't it? <laughs> I feel like I'm probably, well, this is the 11th week or something now, so I'm probably 10 weeks behind all our members who have been following along with the programs at home. Uh, I remember everyone complaining at the start about the grip, and I haven't heard too much about it lately. So, um, yeah, yeah, I think, I think everybody's grips leveled stronger. up. Yeah. Good morning, all. Thank you for jumping on Tribe. My name is Will. If we have not met before, I'm the uh, gym manager here at the gym, and now I'm just getting thrown around the place a little bit with the lockdown. But uh, one thing I have been doing a lot lately is meeting up with our members over Zoom or Google Meet uh, for a electronic face-to-face to introduce people to our programs on our free trials and around our website and just answering questions about exercise, nutrition, recovery and all that jazz. So I know I have a, I have a few uh, calls booked this week so I'm looking forward to connecting with everyone. Of course that is Brad in front of the camera who is our five star A grade tip top model for today's workout and Richie the Rig is back behind the decks mixing where he feels most comfortable. Um, here we don't have him, should have had him mic'd up to see how his, how his weekend was uh, after the leg session. I assume he does have sore legs. Yanni's at home with the kiddly winks. Um, that might become a bit of a common Yanni's feature kids on have got Monday. Whatev- Yanni's kids have got whatever I had. They're, re- they're really sick and he just couldn't get them out. Unfortunately, we might not see Yanni for a couple of days then. No, we'll see. He said he was okay. He's planning on coming in. Good morning, all, and thank you for tuning in. I must have jumped on the um, on the stream late, and that might be why the first comment I can see is Katie McDonald saying good morning. Um, Milos, nineteen eighty one, is saying welcome back. Rad Lee Clark Thanks, is Milos. saying good morning. Morning, and Lee. Gorna is asking, how are you, Richard? Sore legs. Um, that's all I can see, and I think it's because I jumped in a little bit late. So apologies to anyone who's typed in before. Good morning to Yeah, how did Richie go with that leg workout on Friday? Yeah, Richie killed it, but yeah. uh, it also killed him. Was he sore? <laughs> I, certainly didn't, I didn't watch it. I was just laying in bed. He was certainly um, pretty knocked out. Yeah. 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 Good times. Good times. Ah, Kurt Dyer. Yes, you are right. He's saying good morning, Will. Shame the Wallabies couldn't get one over the All Blacks yesterday. Every week is peak week for the ABs. (laughs) Yeah, well, oh man, I was at home. I was yelling at the TV. Um, Kurt, I'm surprised that you couldn't hear me from over the ditch. I I tell you, like the, the young Wallabies team that we have at the moment, are like probably the most exciting I've seen for a while and their attack is really good but they just have so many holes and the All Blacks are so good at capitalising um, 
we were lucky that it wasn't another bloody 50 point blowout so yeah it'd be i was chatting with a couple of guys in my rugby club and they were saying you just can't compare um yourself against the all blacks like you're comparing the best of in history not just at the time but of course now we've got to go and play south africa who are the current world chase shoulder routine so yeah It'll be interesting to see how the rest of the rugby championships pans out, but I'm sure the All Blacks will probably... They could go through and do a clean sweep of the whole series. We'll see. We'll see. I won't bother anyone else with more rugby chat. Good morning, Lucy Marsh-Wakefield, and I assume Andy Montgomery. Good morning, Declan Lee. Morning, Declan. Hi, buddy. Thanks, Kurt. Kurt's saying that the Wallabies will get there. Quick turnaround to the Battle of the Sappers. Yes, absolutely. That'll be a good one. I'm really keen to see, see South Africa and New Zealand play as well. Apparently they're still in quarantine at the moment, so I hope that they kind of blow the cobwebs out against us and you guys get an actual good match. Good morning, Dal Jit. Thank you for jumping on and joining us this morn. Uh, while we're warming up Tribe, we've got 27 watching live and 20 likes. Please jump on, please share, and please like this video. Every now and then I know a lot of you um, chat with your friends and tell us, tell them all about us. I, with those friends on the Monday, always send them a link directly um, just to be like, oh hey, this is that thing I was talking about and I hope they jump on, watch it, maybe listen to this for the sounds of my smooth, calming voice. Um, and then if they're lucky enough, Rad whips his shirt off at some point, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Not that likely today, it's we got a little cold snap back in Sydney. Yeah. Ooh, but the weather for the rest of this week looks good. I think uh, next Saturday is meant to be 26 degrees or something and sunny. I'm going to have to apply the sun cream. <laughs> All right, let's do our core activation. Okay. Andy Lawson is saying, I'll have to have a word with my sis She's part of the massage crew who are working on the Wallabies. Ah, oh, cool. Yeah, please do. What, a, what a, a funny little connection in there. There were a few interviews with um, Wallabies players after the match and you could see how disappointed they were. They're not, um, they're a young side and they don't have much experience, but they are not um, using that as an excuse. Finny Brown is saying this should be an adventure going to try an actual handstand push up against the wall for peak week. Ooh. Make sure you set up the cameras on that. Don't do that, Vinny. <laughs> it's too uh, it's too much of a jump, man, from a pike push up. It's like saying, "Oh, you know, I got I did 30 kilos for my shoulder press, so I'm going to try 60 kilos in peak week." It's way too much of a jump. If you want to make it harder, elevate your feet a little bit. So you still do a pike push up, but you can put your feet on a box about this high. That will make it hard enough. That will Going from a up. pike push up to a handstand wall push up is it's way too much. Okay, guys, I just need to um, do a tiny trigger point release here. My forearm and wrist are giving me some grief today. This is, these are the things that happen when you Take five days off training, all your little niggles come out. And I just realized I haven't set my towel up properly. I forgot we're doing single arm pull ups. I've got to tie that up. So here we go. This is the purpose of a good warm up when you do it. If you, as you're warming up, you're meant to feel the little areas in your body that need a bit of love. And you give them the love that they need. There's definitely something going on here. I've it's been told to stop giving my body the love that it needs, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I'm sure it's for fine if it's the forearm. Ah. If you are having some forearm pain at home, uh, that's always a good one. You will have noticed that Rad was kind of leaning with his uh, other hand on to increase the pressure. Yeah. So great little trigger point release, that one. All right, let's make sure our towels are tied up. Nice and tight. 
A few people at home have, um, that I've been connecting with have been asking about handstands as well. I know Felixion has been <laughs> chatting about it as well. So with what you just saw there, um, you can play around a little bit with that because you will have to start doing a lot more wrist action and um, those little trigger point releases can be <laughs> really beneficial. Okay. Done. All right. Here we go, Tribe. Remember, as far as effort goes, if you are doing peak week, meaning if you are really pushing yourself this week, don't be looking at me for guidance on how hard you should push yourself. I am, um, without a doubt, one of the best ways you can injure yourself is to take five days off training and then come back and try and do better than you did before you went away for five days the best way to injure yourself. So uh, I will not be making that mistake myself. So just be, uh, be aware, the effort that you normally see me put into my training, it won't be there this week. Here we go, guys. Ooh, <laughs> here we go. I was surprised when um, we just started talking about peak week and I thought back and thought, yeah, these cycles really do fly past sometimes. When you're having fun, of course. Andy Lawson was saying his sister came over a few years ago and has been sending pictures of the Wallabies um, last week. Yeah, that'd be a super cool job. I assume she also has to train or travel with the, the team as well. Our physio here, Nilesh, at ADPT Physio. He works for the, um, the Greater Western Sydney Giants, which is an AFL. Uh, team here, Australian yeah, Football yeah. League, um, Aussie Rules as we call it, and uh, he was actually quite lucky that the entire team got shipped down to Melbourne at one point throughout this, as we were in lockdown or just going into lockdown, and they had like two games down there in a row, so they just said let's just keep everyone down there because we don't want to travel too much because of COVID, something like that. We went into lockdown here in uh, Sydney. <laughs> Um, which meant that he had to stay. And then from Melbourne, Victoria went into lockdown, so they relocated all the NRL, so all the rugby league and all the AFL teams up to the Gold Coast in Queensland. And that's where they've been since. And that's been like, I feel like a month and a half. Nelesh has just had a little baby as well. So he is really lucky that if he did go to Melbourne, he would now be in the Gold Coast and he would have been away for six to eight weeks. But uh, he gets to stay here in Sydney. I hope your uh, sister Andy has not had to be subject to the same travel restrictions. Vinnie Brown is saying thank you for the warning. He has been doing some uh, feet elevated uh, pipe push-ups, but maybe just <coughs> increasing the reps. MS Gamer 7 is saying hello. Kay. Single arm pull. Vinnie, one of the biggest mistakes people make with calisthenics is to go up a progression too soon and they go too far. And that's why in these uh, home workouts, we've been working on these pike push-ups for so long because they are, you really need to build strength. And if you do it the right way, you don't go backwards. You're gonna get, you guys are gonna get to a point where pretty soon you will be absolutely ready to go feet elevated and then eventually on the wall, but there's steps to get there that need to be addressed. And if you do it the right way, you get very, very strong. I actually did just then for the first time, all my weight went over my hands so much that my feet came off the step. So I've definitely increased in strength. Um, but I still, wow, I still uh, just do the pike push-ups because it's what most people are ready for or capable of. Okay. Do one or two more reps for rest pause. <clears throat> 29 watching, 29 likes. Bingo, bango, golden cross achieved. Change arms. Thank you, tribe. <clears throat> It'll be very interesting, interesting, sorry, here in Sydney to see how people start going now that we're getting into spring. <clears throat> I feel like the weather is gonna start heating up soon. Meaning the clothes are gonna start coming off, people are gonna start feeling more confident than realizing that they've had a really hard lockdown and winter. <laughs> okay, here we go. 
Last couple of reps. <clears throat> All right, active hero. Active hero. Let us know if you're able to do these without any assistance. You can see Rad is using just a finger or two on the towel. Um, when I was doing it, I was full grip two hands on the towel. The thing is though, even if you can do it without the towel, like I can do it quite easily without the towel, but it becomes a strength movement. And that's why people are feeling such bad doms on, that's why I was feeling such bad doms on Tuesday and Friday going into a leg workout. So you want to deload it. You want to make it more about flexibility and less about strength. Oh good, it's not just me then. <laughs> okay, here we go. For five seconds till we start the next round, tribe. Jumping yeah. in, ready for the pike push-ups. Go. Here we go. <coughs> Remember, tribe, we're trying to stay right up on the toes here. We're corkscrewing our hands into the ground. That will pull the elbows in nice and tight. We want to keep our shoulders protracted. <coughs> Protracted means it's like when you give someone a big hug, it's the shoulder blades coming forward. <sighs> Shake it out, let's get ready for the rest pause slash mechanical drop suit. <sighs> there it is. Remember, try back to home. Push yourself a wee bit more than Rad is. Rad is pushing himself too hard for deload week because he's had these couple of days off sick. However, I bet you haven't. Okay, here we go. For the hamstring stretch. <sighs> this one I'm gonna have to start doing a lot more. You, if you tuned in last week, you'd know my tea bag is woeful. really hard to recover in that position, I know, try, but make sure you jump straight into it when you can and just try to really slow your breathing down. All right, Alrighty. single arm pull-ups. Here we go. How do we start and finish these ex this exercise, Tribe? With the shoulder blade. That's right, with the shoulder blade, making sure when you're at the bottom of the movement, you're stretching all the way down and your shoulder is coming up to touch your ear. Your first movement is depression of the scapula. And then the last movement of the exercise on the way down is elevation of the scapula. You're certainly guaranteed to be sticking with the time today, Tribe, if you're following okay. along with Rad. All right, change on. The hardest part for me last week. I started with the timer and I did not finish with it. That's quite challenging. It is, Rich isn't it? Richie was saying, yes, the legs were sore over the weekend. Fine now, though. Phenomenal feedback. I bet that's a completely <coughs> different stimulus that um, Richie's used to putting through his legs at the moment. And uh, Rest. Uh, most people say the change in stimulus is what creates DOMS, is the biggest creator of DOMS. No weights needed. Exactly <coughs> right. <sighs> Richie uh, filling in to do legs it did inspire me. I did smash out an epic leg session on um, 
on Friday myself. Okay, using here we go, weights, team. Though. Active hero. And I was feeling it all weekend until pretty much today. <laughs> Hero, how Ooh. good. All right, well done. Two down, two to go. Down. A few deep breaths, tribe. We've got about 35 seconds on the clock before we hit round three. Ooh. Chuck in any, of, any other stretches that you feel like you got a little niggle and you need to get that in first. Hard coming back after a few days off. Mm. Haven't done that for a while. I assume you were just laid up in bed the whole time. Yeah, man. I, I did a, like, I just did a little bit of squat mobility every day because I started feeling so stiff. But I did two fifths of bugger all. Okay, mm. here we go. Third round, tribe, let's go. I was going to say, some of the the hard parts about rest days or when you're off <coughs> sick is that not just that you're um, not training, it's that you're getting tighter at the same time. Yep. I know on Saturday I was really <coughs> sore in the legs. So uh, after my leg session on Friday, so I just laid on the couch the entire time, watched telly, and then it wasn't until about two in the afternoon I got up to start moving around and I was even worse than when I woke up. That yeah, was just because that's all I was doing, was just laying completely still. Back into it, tribe. You've seen Rad do the rest pause method. Oh, if shit. you've got any, uh, if you're doing the drop set, remember you can alter the pipe push up to make it a little bit easier. I did it last week by moving my grounded feet a little bit further away. It's a bit tricky with Rad because you'd have to move the block and then line it up and all that jazz. <sighs> Bag stretch. You can see now that Rad's getting pretty warm, he's starting to straighten his legs out as well. You can grab your toes with your hands, straighten your legs out. Oh my I god, used to that is so intense. between that, um, straightening out the legs and then bending my knees, and you'll start to feel this stretch in different areas. Probably the hardest thing about that is just breathing. Oh man, I feel so stiff. <laughs> We did have, um, we had a good question come in over the weekend to our UMS online coaching or the Movement Mastermind group. Someone asked, um, can you get DOMS from stretching? Here we go. Um, and that was a good question because you can indeed, if it's something you're not used to and if you stretch too hard, just like if you lifted a weight too heavy, you do put yourself at risk of injury and you can develop DOMS as well. And that might be a good indication that if you are just doing mobility, which should be easy, um, just to take a, a step back, because you also will really fire up the, the inhibitor, the process where the brain tries to restrict your movement for safety <laughs> reasons. Survival instinct, if you push too hard. Okay, let's go. Hey, Mom. <coughs> Change. <sighs> now that we're in the third week, tribe, we're in peak week. This is the time now where the uh, you've had a couple of goes in a couple of practices and you should really be able to nail that technique or at least you know what you're trying to achieve. And so we can put that mental energy into pushing yourself further. Giving it that little bit extra physically for peak week. Sam Nye has just posed a good question. As we don't have parallettes, what angle should we have our hands? Index, um, index finger facing forward, like that. 
unless it hurts your wrist, turn your hands out. Spot on. Brad's only using the parallax because <coughs> he has a bit of a wrist injury at the moment. So yeah, four, uh, index <coughs> finger facing forward and then you splay the fingers out from there. But if you do have any wrist pain, you can start to turn the hands out Just a little turn bit. Turn the hands out, yeah, if you get wrist pain. And you'll notice as Brad comes down, he keeps his elbow over his wrist when he does the pipe push up, which I'll point out when we get to the last round. Okay. Rib cage down, hips forward. Oop. Okay. All right, 30 seconds left. Okay, here we go, last round, everyone. Let's get ready, tribe. Here we go. Last <sighs> round of the primaries, let's push it. <sighs> so as I was mentioning about the elbows of over the wrists, when we're <laughs> up high in the pike position, when you start, you can <sighs> Brad's elbows are above the wrists and he tries to maintain that throughout the exercise. <sighs> his body to come forward. Check it off. Check it off. A few deep breaths, tribe. Let's get ready for the rest, pause, or drop set. Whichever one you're doing, remember you can push yourself a lot more than Rad today. He's taking it a little bit easier because that's smart. SMRT. I am so smart. I am so smart. S M O T. As you're finishing up your pikes, we can now jump into the tea bag. Remember, Tribe, this is peak week for you. So push yourself through these exercises. Um, if you see Rad taking a little bit easier and you're kind of waiting for him to jump into it, he is taking it easier. So this today is up to you. Let's punch it out. We are really today trying to achieve what drop sets are all about. And that is complete annihilation of the, the muscle. Destroy yourself. Okay, here we go. Continuing on. One. Two. Okay, change arms. is just tucked in recalling that phase four was animal flow workout will phase eight if there is one be something different like that no nah. no it won't there definitely will be a phase eight 100 percent. there absolutely will be it'll be coming out in a week or whenever, next week but it won't be an animal flow type thing <sighs> no it's uh Vinny, we had a unique situation back then, 
And, um, you know, when I asked everybody what they wanted to do and to do something different, you know, people, a lot of people said, yeah, let's do that. But the truth is, I've been doing this for long enough now and I've tried to introduce animal flow into our regular program. I love it. I do it all the time. It's a big driver for me. I but, love it too. Um, Unless you're willing to dedicate an extra, I'd say minimum, minimum 30 minutes a day um, to it on top of everything that you already do, you very, very quickly realize that by doing that, you're no longer doing your raw strength, flexibility and fitness training. That really is, like people get bored and they want to do something different, yes, but at the core of why most people want to train is they just want to be in good shape, they want to be strong, and they want to have the ability to be able to do other things. And so then those other shiny things start creeping in like animal flow, and you start thinking, oh, I want to do that. But unless you're willing to actually do extra time in your training, it's not, uh, it, just, it just means that you start getting good at one thing, and you start getting bad at all the stuff that you really need to be good at anything, which is strength, flexibility, and fitness. And so that's why we are very, very specific about that these workouts are not here to entertain. They're here to create a real result. And so we, we modify things enough that on one hand it keeps you um, um, uh, it, it, it keeps you stimulated like okay, we're doing an accumulation phase or an intensification phase or whatever and we change the supplementary exercises and things, but when you're limited to no equipment, like for example, the, the pike pull up and the some kind of a pull pattern, sorry, pike push up and some kind of pull pattern, there's just nothing that you can do that, that stimulates the muscles in your shoulders the same way like those movements do. There's nothing else you can do without equipment. And so, Yes, it's the same thing over and over again, but you look back over three months, six months, 12 months, and you've built muscle, you've gotten stronger, and you're ready to go and do something else. You compare that to three, six, or 12 months of being entertained in your workouts, but you still can't do anything. I know what I'd rather, and I've seen it for eight years, what, what the masses would rather, even if they say they want something different, they don't stay, they don't keep training. They go somewhere else because they want to find something that gives them the results that they want. And that's why people keep chopping and changing from one program to another. Because they think, oh, this is fun, I'm going to do this. And then after a few months, they think, well, shit, I'm not getting anywhere. I'm going to go and do this one. And then you just get a whole lot of crap. So we make it really, a really clear point of not doing that. We, we are results first. Results are the number one thing. Entertainment is second. And that's why we still, the animal flow course is there, the handstands are there, the press to handstands, the muscle ups, whatever you want, but it's extra. You've got to find the time to do it and you've got to be motivated enough to do that. But the core workout that everybody tunes in for, it's got to be just the thing that people need most. Because if this is all you do in one day, at least if you do this, you're going to see a significant improvement. But if all you do in one day is animal flow, it's, it's great, it's really good, it's got a lot of benefits to it. But if that's all you do, and then one day someone says, let's see how many pull-ups you can do, guess how many you're gonna do? A big fat zero, because it does fuck all to help with your strength like that. So that's, uh, that's not very valuable if you ask me. Okay. Here we go. Knowledge is knowing tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is knowing not to put it in fruit salad. Let's go with our supplementaries tribe. Philosophy is wondering whether, a, what's it called? A um, Bloody Mary is a fruit juice. <laughs> <laughs> I am happy to test that out and... Okay, here we go, guys. Back. Here we go with our supplementaries tribe. Good question there, Vinny. He's saying, yes, he'd need a 26-hour day to be able to chuck um, chuck uh, animal flow back in there. Um, good morning to all our international viewers as well. Good morning, Tanny Burge. 
I know you're tuning in from wherever in the world you are at the moment. Thank you for jumping on. Feel free to type into the comments. Okay, every day. Do your um, drop set or your mechanical drop set if you want. I won't be. Remember this one, Tribe, did the one and a quarter push-ups and then drop set it into just two or three more full push-ups and that was hard enough. If I had my way, Vinny, the UMS would be a lot more animal flow and things like that. But luckily for you, we have Yanni here and Yanni always steps in and goes, uh, oh, Rad, you're making this program too much about what you want and not, en not enough about what people want. And it's a hard lesson, but people, people say, how do I know if what I'm doing is what people want? And the, it's just the easiest answer. The market will tell you. People will either buy from you and stay with you or they won't. And whenever, ever since we've made our program just about strength, flexibility and fitness, that's what you do when you turn up to the gym. We've had so much more consistency with our tribe. People stay with us longer, people like it longer and people want to do other things but we just, we teach them that it's something like, you know, all of our really high achievers that want to do handstands, we teach them how to do handstands, we give them the handstand masterclass, and then they come in and they do it before class. But it's not part of the class, because it means I have to take something else out if I add handstands in. <sighs> all right, here we go. We're back into a tribe. Yeah, I used to, Animal Flow is how I started getting into my mobility journey, which you would think hasn't come very far after my performance last week, but I am more flexible, believe it or not, than I used to be. And uh, I used to use that as like a two or three week, um, I guess intense, um, more intense mobility session for any of my clients that I trained back in fitness first. Um, it was different, it got people moving, it promoted Jump. mobility and, and movement, and people started to really enjoy it, and it improved their you know, squat depth and their coordination immensely. And after about two to three weeks of that, it would also get up a huge sweat. After about two to three weeks of that, we'd start bringing back the actual exercises of squat, deadlift, and whatnot. And I found people's uh, awareness, body awareness, uh, was much improved as well as their mobility. And then we just kept the animal flow in as a warm up. But uh, if, yeah, if your goals are to get str stronger or build muscle, it's unfortunately just not gonna achieve that. But it is a good way to mix it up. I think it's good, it's kind of like a bit of a conditioning phase because you can do it, do rounds for a minute or so on and off, it gets a big sweat up, it does start to fatigue you and uh, overall it promotes extra range, extra mobility. <laughs> Looks like Richie liked my tomato quote. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> <sighs> Gwyneth Nelson is saying peak. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. Gwyneth was here back in the days when we used to do the, uh, the animal flow in the classes. We used to have a day, one day a week, where we used to do it. And it was, by a country mile, the day that the least amount of people turned up to the gym. Yeah, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it was. All right, here we go. I think, uh, Lee, were you here when we used to do Animal Flow? I can't remember. I think it might have been after, after you, um, before you were here. I can't remember. Here we go, tribe, into round two of the supplementaries. Let's go. This is peak week and it's time to earn it. One and a quarter push-ups here if you've got the heart for it. Let's go, tribe. Mark Van Zyl is saying, on it to Moza, gents, here for the like and shout out. Thank you, awesome, Mark. Awesome, buddy. Much appreciated, mucho appreciate. That's Spanish for much appreciated. Okay. Lee Clark is saying, there was some when I started. Yep.
Yeah, I'm already, um, Vinny, I've been thinking this morning about what we're going to do in the next phase. Um, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, it'll be. Well, I think we'll definitely, I think we'll do one or two different things with the straight arm strength. I'm going to, um, I'm going to get you guys, uh, we're going to go a little bit deeper into that L sit. Ooh. We'll do some harder, I'll introduce some harder progression for the L sit. So we won't, I'll show you how to do it without having your feet on the ground if you don't have the strength yet to do a full L sit. Um, yeah, be a couple of new things, but then of course there'll still be the fundamental stuff that has to be in there, which is the pike push up and the pull pattern. I think we might um, we might make this movement the primary pull movement for next phase, so we really increase the volume when we're fresh and go for like five reps instead of three. That is going to be a big level up. God damn, this movement is a bitch when you're already fatigued. How did you go with this one, Will? I loved it, mate. Yeah. Absolutely loved it. No, it, I had a woeful performance. I sometimes started at the top of the movement and Diane Norbury was like, ah, oh, no, that doesn't count. <laughs> but um, the only reason I started at the top was because I thought if I dropped back too quick, I would just lose my grip. So I thought I may as well just start here and I just went to depletion. So, yeah. you know, if you uh, think of my muscles about um, how much they had left in the tank, I was just emptying the tank into the towel. Don't take that the wrong oh. way. But, um, yeah. They're so hard, tough. aren't they? It's so hard, this exercise. This is the, one of the movements that my coach is getting me to really work on. Uh. Certainly turns up that grip strength, Tribe. Keep going. I know there are a couple of moments here where Rad's having lots no. of chats with, with the camera. Um, and you, if you're following along, you might think it's a bit too easy for peak week, but remember Rad is taking it slightly easier because he's been out for out of action for a little while. That is your chance to keep oh. going, to keep drop setting, to keep burning yourself out to the end. Woo! Oh man, I'm definitely feeling it. Tell you what. So you gotta make sure, tribe, that you uh, eat good food this week. Have your protein supplements. Um, try to have several protein serves throughout the day and get good rest. Because if you do this properly, you know, next week, deload week, anyone that's been with us for a while, you know that's a, that's a really easy week. You know, and we do that intentionally. We have a really nice, easy week on the fourth week for those of you that have earned it so that uh, you can recharge and be ready for the next phase. And um, this is the process, guys. This is the process of getting strong, flexible, and fit. You, uh, you have to use that deload week as a time to really just recharge and, and take it as a time to get ready for it, which means that this is the week where you do your best effort right now. So this is our last set of pushing movement for the whole workout. I want everyone to go for it, okay? Don't be looking at me for motivation for how many reps to do. I want you guys that have been consistent with your training to really use this mechanical drop set and uh, get as many as you can, even if you end up doing three sets, not just two, okay? Here we go. If you want motivation um, or a guide to how many reps you do, do double what Rad's doing. <laughs> do triple, do them all. Leave no reps left in the tank. Go to failure with good technique. Rest for 10 seconds, mechanical drop set. Failure again with good technique. Rest for 10 seconds and again. 
good thing is if you're doing the one and a quarter push-ups, you can do that until failure with a good technique. Shake it out real quick, then go to normal push-ups till failure with a good technique. Shake it out. Then drop I'll give it down you guys, to the knees and do it again. I'll give you guys time. So go to failure. I'm guessing most of you will be, have either gone to failure or be getting there now. So take a break if you haven't done so already, just for 10 seconds, no longer. And now do a mechanical drop set, go to normal push-ups or whatever an easier version is of what you just did. Must be able to do it with perfect technique, go to failure again. If you're like me, you wouldn't be able to do more than about five reps. I must be really strong, because my family always said I was a failure, so. <laughs> <laughs> and then rest again and do one more drop set. You'll barely be able to do two or three reps if you've properly gone to failure on the last couple of sets. But just that one, two or three reps is enough to cause that extra damage to the muscle fibers. That's gonna create the growth that we're all here for. All right, guys, you must be pretty close to completion now. Okay, I'm sure everybody's give finished a bit now. Of a rest. I'll give you guys a little bit of a rest before we go into the pulling movement for those of you that really went for it. <sighs> Suck them in deep, tribe. Shake it out. Get yourself ready for the uh, one arm row. Alrighty, tribe. Here we go. Let's rock and roll. Let's do it, people. Let's get that bread. Metaphorically speaking, don't go and get bread. <laughs> go and get those rows in. Here we go. Three second pause. Three second eccentric. Three second pause. Straighten, one second pause. Release. <coughs> Pull, one second pause. Pull, three second pause. Three second eccentric, keep the scapula retracted. Pause for three seconds, keep the scapula retracted. Straighten, pause for a second. Release, one more. Remember tribe, you've got to uh, keep that tempo, you've got to keep those pauses in there. If you don't, you're just making it that a little bit easier on yourself where you're probably gonna get an extra rep in afterwards anyway. So you, we go. you either prolong it by not um, sticking to the pauses and having to do extra reps anyway. So exercise that discipline. Exercise that pause and turn up that intensity level. Make it hard on yourself. Ah. Ah. Doing well, tribe. Keep it up. Mm. Ah. 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 Oh, God. Well done, everybody. Yeah, yeah. And now we're on to the. Uh, Side hand plank. That's what I'm talking about. 10 to 20 seconds. Once you start to wobble and you can't hold still anymore, that's it, that's the end of your set. Do the weak arm first, then match it with the strong arm. Do deep breaths, subscribe. We are almost done. Almost workout there. one of peak week. Okay. Side star plank. Remember, this is a shoulder exercise. Mm. Super wobbly through the shoulder joint. We're on the clock. Okay. You can see how I lost my balance there. That's it. That's the end of my set. 
holding on if you can. Such Same it time on this side. Should be done by about now. Swapping sides. Remember, you can regress this one a little bit by having your feet together. Okay, rest. If you can, this is peak week. Let's see how hard you can go. Woo! God, I can't get over how hard it is. Training after having five days off. It's uh, so much easier to just keep exercising regularly. <laughs> so much easier <laughs> to stay consistent. <laughs> oh yeah. So Once you pull off that wagon, back. it's so hard to get back on. Just doing anything, anything is better than nothing. <laughs> Glad I had to talk myself into it this morning, Tribe, I'll tell you what. But I'm very happy that I did. Here we go. Okay, there we go. Turn sides. We're smashing these ones out now, Try making sure you're trying to keep up with Brad. If you can hold on to it for a couple of seconds longer, please do so. It's okay if you do fall a little bit behind drag because we have a little bit of a break okay. um, at the end of this section. Each section, that's French for section. If you guys are holding up all right, remember, I say this at the start of every phase, um, imagine yourself in a couple of weeks time when you're into peak week, when you've learned the movements and that you've become competent at them and your goal is not to try to perfect the technique, but you're now back to smashing it out because that technique is already on point. Well, we're at that point now. Here we go. You would have had it with the round. pistol squats. You're going to have it tomorrow with the shrimp squats. Movements that you thought, there is no way I can do these. Now you're punching it out. You've found your level of the exercise that you want to do, whether you have progressed or regressed. And you're hopefully starting to feel far more coordinated. You might okay, describe it as feeling stronger. And of course you will be as well. This is where we are really focusing on putting more effort into the exercise in terms of how hard we push ourselves rather than the technique. Because hopefully, not saying sacrifice oh. technique, I'm just saying hopefully we are all on board with the technique and competent at it. Well done, everyone. Woohoo! Done the with workout. the exercises. Now we're under the a bit of mobility, stretching at the end. Woo! Oh. Okay. Here we go. Oh, everything feels stiff today. Remember, Tribe, the stretching is just as important as the exercise. True strength cannot be achieved in the absence of mobility. So the workout is not done, but the hardest part certainly is. Well done, Tribe. Well done. Remember Tribe, if you're looking to um, get interested in the next phase and you want to know about that as soon as you uh, can, you can keep an eye out on our UMS Movement Mastermind group and things like that and watch for the posts. 
uh, you can purchase that uh, purchase that next program as well but your best option which is a no-brainer is to sign up to our 30 day free trial in which you'll get access to our home workouts and in the gym workouts um, for that 30 day period for free um, you'll get all the content that our online subscribers normally get. You'll get those workouts as well as the tutorials coming out. And that is hands down your best option. Plus, for joining up, you will start be able to connect with me. I've been jumping online doing Zoom calls and Google Meet calls with our um, trial members and our other subscription members just to help um, people get started, kind of navigate the Thinkific website and answer any questions about exercise, technique, nutrition, recovery, and all that jazz. And I tell you, I'm really enjoying connecting with everyone across the globe with our programs. I have a call um, just in 35 minutes with Patricia Sturbys. She's based in Canada, so that's great fun. And um, I've even got another call later today with uh, one of our members in the UK. So, um, yeah, if you're looking for a little bit more guidance, that is the perfect way to get it. Jump onto the, I believe it's the second link in the description of this video, where you can check out the 30-day um, free trial. And then you and I will be chatting. Diane Norbury has said, this phase has certainly seen my biggest strength gain ever. Good on you, Diane. Cool, very cool. Well done. And you know, Diane and everyone that's listening, this is what happens, guys. You, you must repeat the same thing over and over and over again until you get a, uh, an adaptation with changing minor variables. You know, so a slight change in the exercise selection, uh, like a shrimp to a pistol or back and forth, or um, even more importantly or more notably, just a change to the tempo with the exact same exercise, like a pike push-up, um, you know, or, or the pull-up, you know, with pauses. Um, there's just no substitute for those movements but when you do them over and over again with changing small variables, it can seem like nothing's happening and all of a sudden, you just get this massive breakthrough. And when you have that breakthrough, as long as you're consistent with your training, you don't go backwards. Like the breakthrough stays with you and then you hunt the next breakthrough and the next breakthrough. And it might seem as though the breakthroughs are few and far between. It might seem like you really train for a long time before a breakthrough happens. but when you look towards, like when, whenever you look backwards, you think, oh my God, I've been training for so long. But when you look forward at somebody that's ahead of you with their breakthroughs, it always seems like they're so far ahead of you. It, that it seems like, oh my God, you're like on another level. But when you talk to them and ask them about it, they, they're always really humbled and they don't see themselves that way because everybody's always looking for the next breakthrough. So we, we often forget to take stock of where we're at and what we've achieved because you're always looking for, you know, what's the next thing that I can do? And then you see people that can do it that you can't. And so you just keep seeing the difference between, oh, I can't do that and they can. And I see that in our members at the gym all the time. Like our senior students um, will be coming up to me saying, man, I just can't nail this thing. But then when you talk to our beginners, they hold our senior students on a pedestal. They're like they're gods because of what they can do. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really important to recognize when you have that you know, increase in strength or increase in flexibility or whatever it is because it's that consistency, that, that chipping away at, uh, you know, at, at getting the results that you want. But yeah, when you have those big leaps where you just go, oh my God, look at this. It's really important to take note of that. Richard is saying, holy dooly, good workout. Gwyneth Nelson has followed up with an HD as well. Uh, Gunnar Nelson is also saying, Miss, missed you at the NTRA this weekend, Will, for interval training. Oh, that's right. Bugger. Sorry, Gunnar. <laughs> um, and you know what? This weekend, I promise you, you're going to miss me again because there is no way yeah. I can keep up with your interval training. <laughs> 
day work drive. Holy dooly, indeed. Rad, considering you uh, missed last week's workouts, holy dooly is now my saying. All right. I am the holy dooly guy. From Patricia. Uh, you, I say oh, it because... No, that's uh, just what, oh, does Patricia say it because of you, does he? Yeah, I've, I've been saying it because uh, when Yanni's kids are in here, I try not to swear. Yeah. And Holy um, dooly. online, I try not to say it too much. And uh, if I ever have a shirt made up, I think that's what I'm going to get subject to. It's the holy dooly shirt. <laughs> I should have called it something better. Yeah. said something better. <laughs> there was an interview with Dave Grohl, the lead singer of Foo Fighters. I know who Dave Grohl is. And... Um, he was saying that if he thought Foo Fighters were going to be as big as they were, he would have called the band something cooler. Yeah, really? They kind of just went along with it and then they became big and he's like, bugger. Yeah, yeah. I remember when they were in Sydney several years ago and uh, they were being interviewed uh, by Triple M or something before they went on at the Horton that night. Oh, so yeah. anybody overseas, the Horton Pavilion is one of the big um, venues for bands when they come to Sydney. And uh, they were uh, they were going on stage at like 8 p.m. and they were getting interviewed at 6 p.m. You know before they went on. And the guy was like, um, it, you know, he goes, ah, oh, so what's going to be happening after the show, Dave? Like you guys, uh, you know, you're having a big after party and stuff like that. And he went, no, I'll probably go back to the hotel room with my wife and kids. And <laughs> he goes, oh. Like, no big wild after party or something, and he laughed, and he goes, no, that was the Nirvana days, you know, we've all got kids and families now, and they tour with us, so I'm in bed by, like, 10 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm off stage at 10, in bed by 10.30. Yeah. That's how I rock and roll. Mm. <laughs> Actually, really funny, I saw a picture of Nirvana uh, a little while ago, and, um, man, Dave Grohl was so young in Nirvana. Yeah. He just looked so different. He was a really skinny dude and he didn't yeah. have a beard when he was in Nirvana. Yeah, right. I'm going to have to look up some pictures. He was the drummer in Nirvana. Yeah. Um, I remember someone interviewing him saying just how um, it's unlikely that a band, uh, just a garage band, becomes as big as Nirvana was. Yeah. And the fact that he then left them or uh, he started another Had band to. afterwards <laughs> and then created another big yeah. global well-known band. Some people kind of write off the success of the first band, but the Foo Fighters became... He's, um, an, yeah, he's an amazing musician, amazing artist. Yeah. All right, Tribe, that's it. Well done. Woo See you tomorrow for leg day. Woo! Well done, Tribe. Congratulations for finishing the first workout of peak week. I hope you guys felt it. Remember next uh, session when uh, we do leg day tomorrow, you push yourself as much as you can with good form and good technique, regardless of what Rad is doing. You've got to train smart before anything. Well done, tribe. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to any of us here in the online UMS Movement Mastermind Group or online coaching call. Until then, we will see you tomorrow. Peace. Health is about performance, not just body image. You better be willing to accept what you're going to have to do to get there. We'll start focusing on movement goals, strength goals, flexibility goals. When you nail that skill, it's there forever. The body image goal doesn't get you that far. It's the consistency and frequency that's going to get you there. It's not the intensity. There's no shortcut to mastery in movement. Destination doesn't change overnight, but your direction will. The gym is not the place to beat up the body that you hate. It's the place to build the body that you love. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image.